working for you. June Lockhart, Hugh Riley, John Provost as Timmy, and of course, Lassie. Some people are just born lucky, and you're one of them. You just got here in time to get right on the inside track with some of these good merchandise that's left. And say, mister, how would you like to buy a good horse? I'll sell them to you for $25, and there's still a lot of good work in them. $15. And I'll throw in a bale of hay to boot. Now, you can't beat that for a deal. Look, mister, you don't want to see that horse slaughtered for fox meat, do you? I don't need a horse. Got rid of mine years ago. Got nothing but machinery on my farm. I'd sell you to anybody right now for one flat silver dollar. Come on, Lassie. Thanks, close, huh? I know, but I gotta talk to you. It's an emergency. Oh? Well, now, what can I do for you? I need to make a loan to save O. Henry's life. Well, now, that does sound serious. Well, I guess we could extend banking hours for such an emergency. Come in. See? Huh? My name is Carter. What's your name? Timmy Martin. And that's Lassie. How do you do? Now, just what is this all about? And who is old Henry? A relative? No, sir. He's a horse. And a very pretty horse. The man at the auction couldn't sell him to anybody. So he's going to take him to the fox farm. And all I need to save him is one flat silver dollar. Well, I think that could be arranged. No, we'll just uh, make the note on the time payment plan. Say, uh, ten cents a week till the loan is repaid. How does that sound? Just fine, Mr. Carter. All right, you just sign right there. Joe. Let me have a silver dollar for this. There you are, Timmy. And I'm glad you brought your business to us. Now remember, make your payments when they're due, and you'll always have good bank credit. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Pryor. Come on, Lassie. You'd sell him to anybody for one flat silver dollar. 
Oh, yeah, I guess, I guess I did. I guess you got yourself a horse, son. Yes, sir. You won't have to worry anymore, old Henry. You lead him, Lassie. And don't let him get loose. Jimmy, where'd you get this horse? Isn't he a beauty, Dad? His name's Old Henry. Well, where did you get him? I bought him at the auction, all by myself. You bought him? The man at the auction was going to sell him to the fox farm, and I couldn't let him do that. Well, Timmy, it costs money to buy a horse. You don't have any money. I went to the bank and I made a loan, just like you do. Can you imagine getting such a big horse for just one flat silver dollar? Can you help me, Dad? A sure thing, partner. You be careful now, Timmy. I will, Mom. I can tell he's gentle. Sure is a smart horse, Mom. He is? Uh-huh. You know that old wood gate down by the old field? Yes. He opened it. You mean he lifted the latch? No, he just leaned. Timmy, I want to talk to you about your horse. Did you see the gate down by the old field, Dad? Well, Henry opened it. He just leaned. I think it may need a little fixing. Well, that's not what I had in mind. But while old Henry is here, I'd just as soon you open the gate for him. Okay, Dad. Well, he's here. What do you mean? Well, old Henry's a good horse, but we just don't need him here on the farm. But that's not fair, Dad. You didn't even give him a chance. I bet he could work. I bet he could pull anything. We have a tractor to do the pulling, dear. Then I could use him as a pet. Lassie wouldn't mind, would you, girl? He's not the kind of horse you keep as a pet. He's too big, and he's too awkward to ride. I can ride him. I don't even need a saddle. You can keep the horse, Timmy, but only until we decide what we're going to do with him. Come on, Lassie. But if you're big, can you, old Henry? for a ride on old Henry. You know, I've got to do something about that old horse before Timmy becomes too attached to him. That's easier said than done. From what I've already seen, it's too late. You know, Ruth, I've never objected to any number of strays that Timmy's brought home. But if there's one thing we don't need around here, it's an old farm horse with an appetite. Well, he does eat a lot. <sighs> Almost a bale of hay a day. No wonder the auctioneer was glad to get rid of him. From the auctioneer to Timmy to the pound. Oh, I didn't say that, Ruth. But now that you bring it up, the pound always has been humane to animals, even when they have to put them to sleep. Unless they're sick or a rabbit, they always try to place them first. Do you think they could find anybody who'd want a horse like old Henry? Well, this isn't getting my work done.
I just bedded my horse down for the night. I'm going to ride him out to the Indian ruins tomorrow. Night, Mama. Good night, dear. Good night, Dad. Good night, Tim. Uh, Tim, come here a second. You know, Timmy, I, uh, I hardly know how to tell you this in a way that you'll understand, but I'm afraid we just can't keep old Henry. You see, on a farm, every animal has to be worth his keep. Running a farm is a business, Timmy. And it has to be run in a way that's best for the farm. Do you understand what I mean? Why, we don't even have a harness for a horse. And it costs a lot of money to buy one. Besides, I'm afraid that old Henry's too old to have any pull left in him. But you never having to worry about at home ever again. It isn't Dad's fault. He just doesn't understand that I can't break my promise. If we could only prove that you've got some pull left in you. I've got it, Lassie. There's an old broken down wagon in an old mine. And there's some harness around, too. Don't give up hope yet, old Henry. You wake me up when it's daylight, Lassie. We're gonna go out to that mine. Now the horse is gone, too. Oh, don't worry about it, dear. Timmy's probably taking him out for a farewell ride. You go ahead, eat your breakfast. You know, I hated to upset him last night. He may even be trying to find a new home for old Henry. Do you think I was wrong in telling him he couldn't keep his horse? No. We both agreed it just isn't practical. I'm afraid, however, that Timmy Fields' old Henry is already a member of the family. That's trouble. I kind of like him myself. inside and get that harness.
is it, girl? Dear, I hope Timmy hasn't fallen off that horse. Time, Ruth. Every second counts. Timmy! I got an idea. You stay here and pray that it works. He'll be buried even deeper. We have no other choice. Even a small hole will let some air in. If you ever pulled in your life, old boy, pull now. better than to go snooping around in places like this? I was sure I saw a harness with the old wagon. I thought old Henry could use it to earn his keep. But there was only this piece. You needn't worry anymore, Timmy. Old Henry's already paid his keep for the rest of his life. He's got plenty of pull left in him. Son. Well, now that you're a real junior farmer, Irv Simmons says we can keep the harness and the harrow as long as we need them. Here comes Mom and Lassie. 
Hi, Mom. How'd you like the job I did? Oh, well, it's just fine. It just came. I couldn't wait. Give it to Timmy, Lassie. Go ahead, open it, son. Well, now that you've proved that you know how to do business with the banks, and you're going to be helping me here in the fields, for which you'll get an extra allowance, I thought you might be needing it. A wallet with a picture of Lassie on it. See? One dollar is to repay your loan at the bank. The other dollar is, well, let's just call it a good luck dollar for your wallet. Gee, thanks. Might as well be prepared in case another good business proposition comes along. You did pretty well on your deal for old Henry. I sure did. 